Well, what a sight at Pepper Stadium in Penrith. A sold out arena for this clash between two heavyweights of world football. The dignitaries are in the house, including the New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berejiklian. And there's the former leading goal scorer for Australia, Kate Gill, who lost her record to Lisa Devanna when Devanna scored two against Brazil in that 6-1 win in California just a month and a half ago now. So Devanna, Australia's record goal scorer with 42 goals. Sam Kerr nominated for the FIFA World Player of the Year. Caitlin Ford, the reigning Asian Player of the Year. And past winners of the Julie Dolan medal scattered throughout Australia's starting 11. They really have captured the hearts of a nation. And this place was sold out weeks ago. And there are still hundreds trying to get in as well out the back. And they're starting to fill up the hill. Massive crowd. And these two countries have a fabulous rivalry. Played in the last three World Cups. Brazil knocked the Aussies out in 07, a five goal thriller there. In 2011, they met in the group stage, a one nil win for Brazil. And in 2015, Australia got their own back. And here the teams come. They also squared off at last year's Olympics in Belo Horizonte, an engrossing game, went to extra time and then penalties and Australian hearts were broken as Brazil went through 7-6 after the shootout. So the teams in position, we're not too far away from the national Ladies anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthems of Brazil and Australia. Well, they sing the anthem with pride wherever they go and they get to sing it in front of a sellout crowd here in Penrith this afternoon. Let's check all the team news ahead of this clash.
And Australia filled a very strong starting 11. Lydia Williams only played one game in the Tournament of Nations. She played against the USA in that historic result and missed the next two, but she's back fit and ready to go today. The back four of Carpenter, the young teenager, Kennedy and Catley and Kellen Knight in the left back role. Van Egmont captains the side today in midfield with Gorry and Buck. And then the star started trio up front, Ford, Kerr and Devanna. For Brazil, well, they go with a 4-2-4. And they have the five-time World Player of the Year, Marta, playing in Australia for the first time. She was shattered to miss the trip here back in 2014. Andressa Alves is another very dangerous player. And Cristiani has World Cup history against Australia. So Australia's back four and Lydia Williams will have their hands full this afternoon. These are the benches available to the respective coaches. And you could expect the likes of Legazzo and Gilnick to be called upon by Alan Stagic if the Matildas are in need of goals. And listen to the crowd roar as Brazil get on the front foot streaming forward in great numbers and the prospect of a real attacking encounter here Sarah Walsh with Brazil going with a front four a 4-2-4 yeah I'm interested to see how how this sets up in defense obviously you can't leave four players uh, up the top but we talked about Fabiana she uh, she can play left back so I'm gonna I imagine we're gonna see some responsibility in defense from her but you're right Brenton they are all out attack today and don't forget, they actually opened the scoring in that 6-1 defeat from a set piece very early on, and they've got one here. Andresinha is a dangerous set piece tanker. She's the right footed option here. Then you've got Andresa Alves as well, who just taps it for Andresinha. The delivery not great, but it still finds Marta. And around the Brazilian game for so long now 31 years of age and racking up those hundred caps already here's Fabiana dangerous right side of the attacking player not only Cristiani a Barcelona player but also Fabiana yeah they've, they've been long uh, long time teammates these two they they have great combinations look for that today you'll see Marta drop in watch watch her runs in, in between uh, in between the lines and you see she plays that 10 role very traditional 10 role with solid clearance from Alana Kennedy playing alongside Steph Catley in the heart of Australia's defence. Those two are teammates as well with the Orlando Pride in the States. They got the jump on Marta, who is their club teammate. Catley and Kennedy beat Marta to the punch, and Devana couldn't quite keep that one in. But Australia looking for a decent spell of possession here. It's been all Brazil so far. Leticia. 22-year-old right back finds the feet of Marta. And they'll be looking to try and take the sting out of this home crowd who are a little quiet, waiting for the team in green and gold to click into gear. Bruna, one of three survivors from the 11, which took on Australia in California. Hassled out of possession by Devanna. Now the crowd gets excited. Elise Kellen Knight. So versatile, can play in midfield or in that left back role. Brazil uh, playing with some confidence here. There's Bruna, won't muck around this time with Kerr closing her down. Hatley's header away. Awkward one for Carpenter, got away from the teenager. Kennedy with a heavy touch. And now Brazil will look to launch through Andressa Alves. Beautiful ball out to Cristiani. Nice little move on Carpenter and the cross not bad either again Kennedy is called upon to concede the corner well this is what we've come to expect from Cristiani she can make something out of nothing she's completely marked then you see here she fakes to go right and then takes it left and next minute's actually in the box and it's a great ball in but well read from Milana Kennedy it was much celebrated when a 16 year old Caitlin Ford went up against Marta in a World Cup today it's Carpenter out there, another teenage right back, and she'll learn plenty up against the likes of Cristiani. Sandra Senior again, former club teammate of Lydia Williams. And a chance, and the header flashes just wide from Rosanna. 
who scored against Australia in the 2011 World Cup. Well, it wasn't a great ball in. It was well looked after. We could see we had enough. Uh, Matilda's had enough numbers there. Obviously, getting up there was Rosanna. Rosanna's been in the, hasn't been in the team for a year now. Been pulled back after that 6-1 loss. About 35, 35 years of age. I think uh, Emily need, no, knew she actually needed some experience back in the team. She played in Australia in the Sydney Olympics. Rosanna and still going strong 17 years later. Oh, a slip from Gorry. They turn it over to Jennifer. Looking for Cristiani. It'll still find a teammate with this aggressive formation for Brazil. And Gressa Alves taking on Carpenter this time. And side netting. Well, it's good build-up play again. And Brazil getting plenty of numbers in the box earlier, and that will happen with that 4-2-4 formation. But here, they're quality balls in the box too. You can see Andressa Alves. Oh, she's such a, a potent left foot on her. And given space, she can do damage. Brazil, their preparations beginning for the 2018 South American Championship next year. And, of course, Australia have an Asian Cup to look forward to in April of next year in Jordan. So both of these teams have that on the horizon. Lydia Williams just outside of her area looking to play the diagonal. Cut out by Fabiana. Just wouldn't sit for Jennifer. She thought she was fouled and now Kerr has it and the referee comes back and decides to give the decision to the Brazilian midfielder. See Jennifer trying to bring this down here. Enough players behind the ball, the Matildas, but I don't think that's a free kick. Cristiani couldn't quite keep it into her team's advantage, and now Devana springs into action. And Brazil unceremoniously upend Devana, and she wants a yellow ticket for at least one of those Brazilians. Well, this is the danger, isn't it, for Brazil? You play with so many forward, you push them forward. The counter, especially with the speed that the Matildas have, you can see Lisa Devana taking the ball in front of her defender. I don't know if that's a, if, I don't know if that's a card, but definitely a foul. She knew what she was doing, Rosanna. All that experience, a player you know well as well. And Devana thought that was very cynical. See what Catley can dish up. Kennedy has gone forward. And they work a little variation here. Catley on her wrong side, but she does well to earn her team a corner, and that's a better place to whip in a set piece. Yeah, this is dangerous for Brazil. Matildas have definitely been working on their set piece structures, making sure they're getting the right balls into the box. Emily Van Egmond. And Alana Kennedy are going to come from deep here. They're the real aerial threats. Now they make their move. Kelwin Knight's delivery. Didn't get past Andressa Alves, but Kelwin Knight has another chance. Good shape about that one. And headed clear by Raffaele. Now they look to spring a little counter. Cristiani. It's a nice idea. She was isolated. It was one against five, but she gave it a crack. You can see the Matildas not giving her an inch. There were three players on her, Rita. Ready to drop back in defence. What about this immaculate pitch for the Matildas to play on this afternoon? There'll be more fixtures at Pepper Stadium in the years to come if they keep dishing up this kind of surface. The players relishing being able to strut their stuff here. Van Egmont flighting it over the top to Kellen Knight. And the bounce read well by Letitia, but at the expense of a corner. You have a feeling when the crowd actually gets into this match as, as it goes on. You can see they're getting in once the attack. It's a great ball in here from uh, Emily Van Egmond. You can see Fabiana here. She's actually dropping quite well as well. They've rolled it short to Gori. Now Van Egmond. Nice little move. She's got that in her game. And the delivery to the back post. Kerr was climbing. And it flicked off the head of Raffaele. And Kerr couldn't get a meaningful touch on it. This is probably what we actually expected for the first 15 minutes. We're yet to see either team get the ball on the deck and actually start to move the ball around. So I think they're, st they're still feeling each other out here. 
Still upset with herself, Sam Kerr, that she couldn't direct that on target. And just about everything she has been touching of late has been finding the back of the net. Some absolutely incredible performances in the United States. And now her delivery, a slip in the middle. Ford trying to help it on to Nevada. Australia have three or four in the box here. Little one, two. Nevada. Sam Kerr waits. And the header glanced wide. Caitlin Ford had the opportunity. And Australia are finding their mojo. And now when we do see him get, a, get the, the ball on the deck here, the boot-up play for this was phenomenal. Sam Kerr didn't actually get a foot on, didn't get a great connection with the ball. But the perfect one-two between Ford and Devana. That understanding between these three, you really can't underestimate it. And any kind of extra touch on that, and Ford does open the scoring. Mind you, Kerr was shooting in the first place, but Ford nearly improvised. It's a good effect. Look at Kellen Knight with urgency, hoping a teammate would run into space. Can't be offside from a throw, of course. Ford knew she was offside there, though, so didn't chase Kellen Knight's pass. Opening 10 minutes has flown by. Australia with the best chance of the game so far. Emily Lima would have been delighted with the first five or six minutes, but now she's a little worried. Yeah, well, they're, gonna, they're going to have to ride it out, Brazil, I think, especially with that formation. It, it, it's actually quite risky because what, what, that transition into defence, if it's not done properly, it's actually quite dangerous against, as we talked about, this attacking line for, for the Matildas. Yeah, they are the six-time champions of South America. Only ever lost one of those championships to Argentina. Red hot favourites in that tournament next April, and Australia, you'd have to think, will be going in favourites as well after what they've done to Japan lately. Yeah, well, it's fair to say they've lost that underdog title that they, the Matildas, have held held on to for many, many years, and now yeah, now having to play in front of crowds like this, this become their norm. Edmond's header, not the touch that Raffaelli was after. can let it sail back to an inexperienced keeper in Danny. Just her second cap. Both of them against Australia. They're without Barbara. Look at this. Sam Kerr just over hit by Ford who holds her hand up apologetically. But they have such a wonderful understanding, those two. They do. Uh, the, Ford then didn't even look up to, before she played that and Sam Kerr had already made the run. Sam Kerr is definitely going to have to work a little bit harder today because I imagine Brazil, they're not going to keep a high line. She's not going to have a lot of space in behind. A lot of their video analysis would have been centred around Sam Kerr. You'd fancy there's plenty to find online with what she's been doing lately. Yeah, and, and that obviously opens up opportunities for Lisa Devana, Caitlin Ford, and one in particular, Tamika Butt. We haven't spoken a lot about her. Loves to, to run beyond the line of defence. They all pose huge threats to this Brazilian defence. Ford. She's got it stuck under her feet again, but she's good enough to wriggle out of trouble. Feed it back to Catley. We've seen her play plenty of games for Australia in the left-back role, but today she's a centre-half. That was intended for today's left-back, Helen Knight, but too much pepper on it from Kennedy. It really shows the versatility of this defence. If St Steph Catley's preferred position is left-back, and uh, Kellen Knight is a holding midfielder, so they lose a player for any match. We've got to see that rotation for the Tournament of Nations. Steph Catley can actually play anywhere, really. And Kellen Knight has been in the team of the tournament at the last two World Cups in two different positions. First off, it was the left-back role in 2011, and then as a midfielder in 2015, where she really stood out, particularly against Japan. Australia were eventually knocked out on that day. Now the pace of Kerr again, clearly blocked off. And the appeals are waved off, and Alan Stagic can't believe it. He's thinking it must be a yellow card for Bruna. It's not even a free kick, but now Kerr has it, and she's chopped down again. There's no whistle, but Kerr, so determined, got back to her feet. She's not getting much love from the referee. 
And now the free kick goes to Martin, just to wind up these fans a little bit more. Now they're getting into it. Well, that's about the only way you're going to stop Sam Kerr is actually hang on to a shirt and pull it down. She was off there. That's a clear yellow card. She was off to goal. Nothing in this tackle here. A bit of retaliation from Gorey further on. Well, didn't touch it much in the opening five minutes, but he's starting to dominate now. Into the back of Caitlin Ford, who holds her feet and stares down with a look of disdain at Letitia, who was attacking her from behind, which is a no-no. This is what Brazil don't want. They don't want Australia to find some kind of rhythm, get that ball on the on the ground. It's something they pride in their game. They like to play possession. They like to move it around, get their opposition moving. Australia taking some risks. The club teammates head to head there. Marta trying to pick the pocket of Catley, but she was good enough. Now today's captain, Van Egmont. Look at the turn from Kerr. And she leaves it. Well, she thought she was leaving it for Ford. Now she can use it. Back to Van Egmont, capable of long-range strikes. And that's just over here. She was trying to feed it out towards Carpenter. Yeah, just taking the wrong decision. But this is that quick ball to Sam Kerr, the turn. Absolute dynamic. That first step that she has, the acceleration, it's just undefendable. Scored 19 goals in 15 games for club or country in a two-month spell there she might be offside here they get away with it perhaps now Kerr and it just rebounds off Ford that was another opportunity for Caitlin Ford if she made that first touch stick now the foot race Marta v Kellen Knight League one just bouncing it back to Lydia Williams who got traded Recently in the United States, now applying her trade with the Seattle Reign after being a long-time Houston Dash player. That pass was poor. Jennifer took it away from Gorey, who hasn't been able to get into the game as yet. What about that trick from Cristiani? And Catley didn't really deal with it. Knocked out by Kennedy. You can see Marta waving her arms. She wanted quick early service. Andressa Alves, she trod on the ball as well, so players expecting the surface just to react a little differently, taking them a little while to get used to it. Now Danny being closed down by a couple of Matildas, composed stuff from the keeper. It's Cristiani. Gets rid of Van Egmont. Not so, Carpenter. And that should be offside against Marta and is. Australia's back four with the disciplined approach there. Yeah, we could see that Alana Kennedy had held her run there, allowed Marta to, to call offside, but there, there's the posing danger. That ball's played a little bit earlier there. Fabiana's in the box waiting for it. The football brain of Elise Kellen Knight on display there. You could watch it on the replay. She knew she had Marta, just held her line, asked for the assistance flag, and she got it. Playing her club football in Germany with the powerhouse that is Turbine Potsdam. Based in Berlin, Elise Kellen Knight, and she wants it here. Letitia read it well, though. Took it on the chest. Rolled it past Gorey, wants it back. Great movement from the right back. Catley had to thwart that, otherwise they were away through Fabiana. And the throw goes that way. Cristiani bopping up all over the place right now. Getting back onto that left boot. Asking for support. That's brilliant to find a teammate in that situation. Andresinha closed down by Ford. It breaks for Kerr. Little move back inside and it breaks for Tamika Butt. She looks for a killer ball and Devanna wasn't anticipating that. Well, again, it's the counter. And during that play, I didn't see one of those strikers make a, a retreating run for the Brazil team. 
It's going to be a really big part of this match, the counter. There's a confidence booster for Carpenter. Taking it away from Andresa Alves. That's a risky pass across the face of goal, but they've got that understanding, the club teammates. It's an intriguing tactical battle in the opening 20. It'll be interesting to see how the jet lag plays out, especially Marta only coming in a couple of days ago. No whistle, but the advantage actually works out for Brazil here. Rosanna pushing forward. Teammates to hit in the box. And it slices off the outside of her boot. Scored in that 2011 World Cup in the group stage in Germany. Both teams went through to the knockout stage. Kennedy. Going to find Kerr. Look at that. First touch football, helping it on to Devanna. She wants it back, Kerr in the middle. Devanna showing her tricks. Two veterans head to head here. Trying to stand up, Rosanna. Finds the feet of Gori. All pretty tight out there, but Devanna takes the game on. Turns her opponent inside out. Van Egmon to the feet of Caitlin Ford. Now, Kellen Knight doesn't score too many, trying to be a facilitator. Van Egmon. She's got the technique to try that, and it was travelling away by Raffaelli. And Australia win it back through Gori. And the pass from Kerr didn't favour to make a buck. Well, again, a number of different passes from different players on the edge of the box. There's just real no urgency from Brazil's defence. Seem a little bit flat, a bit slow to get to the ball and actually put real pressure on the ball. At times, it looks like Australia have gone 4-2-4 in response. Just leaving Gorry and Van Egmond as the midfielders. And Tamika Buck joining the trio up top. Catley won't want to muck around here. Van Egmond turns away from trouble. Playing out from the back is their want. And successfully achieved here. Now they make Brazil turn defend but Kennedy couldn't squeeze it down the line you see there's no real solid structure to this this Brazil's team and, and most of the time that actually works to their advantage they're they're, un, they're quite unpredictable but against a team like Matilda's today they're going to have to be a little bit more compact a bit more uh, discipline in each in each position He passes on to Carpenter. Kennedy again. They're happy to leave her on the ball. And she's good enough to find Bud there. And Devanna slaps her hands in frustration after that effort. Opening quarter of the game is gone. We expected it to be a lot tighter today, a lot more competitive, and we're seeing that. Marta. Well, playing herself into trouble nearly, but was so close to poking that away, and Australia would have been in through Kerr. Uh, she got really lucky there. I'm going to say she looks so tired, Marta. She looks very tired. You can see here, it's a, it's a really, I guess, amateur mistake on by her own standards to be playing with the ball. So risky in a back line. Not even sure what she was doing back there to start with. The pass given away. Van Egmont gets her head up straight away. Cowan Knight, look at that ball. Kerr directing traffic, wanted Ford to try and go in behind there. And now Brazil look to counter, but Buck sees to that. This is a player who's really found her mojo again. Troubled by an ankle injury. Sort of on the periphery for almost a couple of years there, but scoring goals for fun in Norway. Here's Kerr. Well defended by Raffaelli, and she gets a goal kick as well. That was expertly done. 
could see what Kerr was trying to do. She knew Devanna was there looking for a square ball, but didn't open up. Yeah, I think Raffaele did a really good job of keeping Sam Kerr on a left foot. She's uh, heavily right-footed. That left can be equally as dangerous. Something they most definitely would have targeted for Sam Kerr. Oh, beautiful move from KK. Yes. Teammates know it. Here's Marta. That's a better effort to turn away from Gori. And she's looking for Cristiani. Put it out in front of Andressa Alves instead. As Cristiani was well marked by Catley. Gori. Oh, she got plenty of ball and a little bit of her opponent in Jennifer, who got the benefit of the doubt there. And that's what Gori looks for to rob possession from her opponents and then spring Australia into action. Well, it happens really quickly when it, when it works. I think Brazil, thankful for that stoppage of play. They really need to just get up their shape higher up in the field. They're currently ranked ninth in the FIFA rankings. Australia three spots higher than them, but the Matildas, if they can get two wins in these two internationals, and they could climb comfortably into the top five. Well played by Ford. Oh, Kerr. Absolutely clobbered in back play by Jennifer, who does pick up the first yellow of the afternoon. And another teammate is down as well. That's Devanna. She was met by Rosanna. Well, there was no doubt this was... It couldn't be more late. Sam Kerr released the ball and got cleaned up after the fact. There's no doubt Matildas were off. She had a bit more time and a bit more composure on that ball. Always it's good always... to see Sam Kerr back up quickly, though, with all her injury concerns that she has fought back from as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt every single match these two teams have played, they have always been physical matches. Some of my most physical matches ever played were against Brazil. They're such a proud nation. They win every single battle. And the Kiwi referee managed to keep the yellow card in her pocket until the 26th minute. Van Egmont flights it. Kerr's there. They got in each other's way. Her and Kennedy. The sun, an issue there, but it worked out okay for Andrasinha. Credit to Van Egmont for slowing Cristiani down. Dragged off the ball there by Kellen Knight. An obvious decision. You can see the, the amount of uh, interest she demands on the ball. There were three players there understanding how potent her her left foot is to release a ball to Marta. Has to be closed down. Cristiani, a veteran of four World Cups and four Olympic Games. And she's just 32 years of age. What experience on the big stage. Now Letitia will be offside here. Not sure why. Fabiana was standing there asking for the ball instead of looking across the line because she was at least a metre or two off. Just talking about Cristiani and Marta, they've been around forever. And what I, what I love about those two is they've adapted their game. Marta isn't as quick as she's still very quick, but not as quick as she used to be. So you can see her preserve that energy and use it when she needs to in the, in the very important moments. They're both, both very smart footballers. And ball there against Fabiana. And Egmont able to get it moving quickly to Ford. The pitch can open up here if they can get it out towards Carpenter, but Ford ran herself into trouble and then gave away the foul, and she'll go into the book for stopping Marta. And you do hark back to 2011 now when the 16-year-old took on Marta and kept her really quiet that day. You know, this is this has just been a, a matchup for the for the ages, hasn't it? Both got explosive speed. And Caitlin Ford knew she had to do something special there. Something about Brazil, they really punish you for mistakes. As you saw from one of the earlier balls flighted by a Brazilian, they are playing into the breeze in this first half, so you wouldn't expect them to take on a strike here. From this kind of range, you're not going to beat Lydia Williams. I'll be looking to pick out a teammate. Or will they defy logic? She's got the ability, Andres Alves. 
in that left boot of hers. Williams is worried about the teammates to attack it. Andres Alves does flight it. And a bit of tugging going on there. The flag was up and Lydia Williams just tips it over the bar for show. But the offside flag. That's the call. Against Cristiani. The ball wasn't actually, it, was, it didn't have enough pace. So it was a bit floaty and it wasn't, uh, I guess, strong enough for Christian. She's copped a elbow to the eye there, or mouth. Eagle-eyed call by Sarah Ho, the Australian assistant on the near side. Replay showing that Christiani had strayed about 50 centimetres offside. Cowan Knight, first time, found Kerr. A little layoff to Gorry. And Egmont. Bruna was hoping her keeper might come and deal with that one. And Devanna closed her down. And now gives a little bait to Van Egmont about where that ball was targeted. Because Devanna was on the other side of the pitch and Van Egmont came near side. Yeah, well, she, uh, Lisa Vanna was expecting it the other side. Wrong decision, but it was very lackadaisical from uh, Brazil. She's not afraid, is she, Devanna, to give teammates a little bait? Playing with South Melbourne lately in the women's competition down there and collected some more silverware. Just last week, they won the Premier's Plate and she's hoping her teammates can do her a favour this weekend and get her into a grand final and give her a week off. Doesn't want to play in a prelim next week after all these Matildas <laughs> commitments. She's been finding the net too. Here's Kerr. Early ball in. Devanna on her wrong side. Tried to shape it towards goal. Now Marta. Rosanna should be able to get Brazil back on the front foot here. With the skills of Andressa Alves. Buying some time for Raffaele. Move into position. Bruna taking a risk there. Devanna was tempted. And Van Egmont looked like she cut down Andresinha. There was no signal of advantage. Well, risky football here from Brazil in their, in their back third. There's just real no urgency on the ball. And that's not such a bad thing in your final third, but in your back third, it's just really dangerous. I'm watching the flicks and tricks from Cristiani. All left foot, but such a brilliant player. Kennedy won the US Championship last year. Success on grand final day with the New York Flash. One of three Aussies to triumph in the title game. This is better from Australia. Plenty of space here for Butts. Carpenter outsider. She uses the teenager. And the cross, not a great one. From Ellie Carpenter. Move from Cowra down to Sydney as a 12 year old so she could attend Westfield Sports High and chase her football dream. And she was a Matilda by the age of 15. And starting it right back. She's 16, 17 now. She played so well in the Tournament of Nations. And you can see that. She's matured. She's definitely got a long way to go, but to start her at right back up against Brazil at home. And your family in the house to watch her and all of these Matildas. And such a big day for the game. Letitia curls it around the corner. A little back heel from Fabiana. The two right side players combine. Catley gets Devanna going the other way in a hurry. She thought she was fouled. Majority of fouls have gone against the home team. Here's Cristiani. Just got there first ahead of Kennedy. Now that left boot of hers. What a cross. Important touch there by Catley. And Gorry wasn't mucking around with it. Kerr. So strong. Away she goes. Sammy Kerr into space. Brazil. They back off. And they're worried. Little flick to Ford who won't get there. She was offside anyway. Well, this has all started with a, a terrible, terrible matchup for, for Brazil. Rosanna on Sam Kerr here. 
Look at that. They're not the two that you want together. Sam Kerr's off, finds the space. Just error in the decision making at the end. She almost had too much space. Talked about the breeze. I reckon Australia are going to play better into the breeze in the second half with their pace and ability to hold up balls for these pacey players to run onto. Is that fair? Would you prefer to play into the breeze or with it? Yeah, I'd, I, especially with this pace, as you just said. But well, Kellen Knight, an obvious free kick, might get away without a yellow there because she kind of let her go, voicing her disapproval with Fabiana. Fabiana, which sure she got a body in the way, and um, it's not a free kick. They set themselves up nicely here. Marta has come across, and Emily Lima is getting her message across on where she wants it delivered. Left foot of Marta, or the right foot option of Andresinha. Leaves it for Marta. Breezes pass to Mika Butt. Goes direct, looking for any kind of flick. And Kennedy again stands tall. Andressa Alves now gives it away to Gori. There's another clear foul. Andressa Alves, the latest into the book for the cynical effort. They're accumulating now, aren't they? Was it really struggling to to handle these counters. She's completely kept off guard. That's the only way she's going to hold off Katrina Gorry there. I think there's also been a call from the coach for this defensive line to drop to, and drop quicker. They really had a purple patch just before half time. Last time they met the Matildas. Gorry having a go down breeze. Scored that wonder goal for the Brisbane Raw from further away than that a few years back now. But that was ambitious. Yeah, for anyone that's seen some of those goals from Katrina Gorry, close to the centre circle, you can't blame her for trying it. Oh, nearly off the back of Kerr to find Ford. Of course, Gorry, another former Asian player of the year. Ford is the reigning best player on the continent. She thought she might have got a little deflection there off Marta, but Sarah Ho says it's Brazil's ball. Stagic will back his team fitness-wise to finish off half strongly against this Brazilian team. It could be a little danger period for the team in blue. These players playing abroad. Van Egmond and Kellen Knight both in Germany. Van Egmond with the powerhouse that is Wolfsburg. Actually struggling for game time there at the moment. That's a corner. And the assistant right on top of it. Well won by Ford. That's a great result for the Matildas. Something out of nothing again. You can see Raffaele caught off guard realize it. it's just this the pace in their game in, in which they're actually playing with the ball their, their decision making everything seems a little bit I guess two steps slower than the Matildas today and saying that I, I imagine Alan Stadjic probably agree the Matildas could be a bit more clinical with the ball as well Kellen Knight Kennedy climbed for the header and if she kept it down she would have opened the scoring but it was so difficult to get over the top of well, it's exactly where she wanted it. Perfectly timed ball in from Elise Keller Knight. Great amount of whip. Just couldn't get ahead over it, Alana Kennedy. Look at Van Egmond. Gorry was a chance to win that back too. Lovely little reverse ball from Van Egmond. Kerr, the target there from Ford's delivery. Marta gets her head up. She knows where Cristiani is, hangs it up in the breeze. Look at Marta's ability to find her teammate. Fabulous ball. And what a challenge from Catley. And that ball actually probably highlights how much of a, a factor this breeze is. 
Yeah, she toughed it because she knew how strong the breeze was. Absolutely, but I wonder if that's actually playing more of a more of a role in the way that uh, they're not even they've not been able to use uh, Andresa Alves or Fabiana how they'd like to with, with that whip. And the awkward fall here for Cristiani, just bracing with that left arm, and she's a little ginger in the shoulder. Marta, the two number tens head to head. And Egmont goes to press Bruna. Cristiani lets it run. Fabiana now. Catley again. Perfectly timed challenge. Now, Fabiana searching for a corner. Catley doesn't let her get one. What a fabulous defender she is, Steph Catley. Championship winner the last two seasons in the W League with Melbourne City. She won one as well as captain as a teenager with the victory. So she's a winner. And she's also been rewarded as uh, one of the five uh, leadership players within this team. You can see we, the, the captaincy has been rotated throughout the tournament of nations. Emily Gil, uh, sorry, Emily, Emily uh, Van Egmon has it today. And they all lifted that trophy together. The five leaders of this Matilda squad. There's the armband today on Emily Van Egmont, who was crowned the Jewelry Dollar Medalist a few years back now as a Newcastle Jet. No room at all for Fabiana, and the weight of numbers one out. Kerr just killed it. Here's an opportunity. Devana too slow with the pass to Kerr, who was five metres offside by the time Devana was able to get the ball in her control and under her spell, but. Just had to try and help that forward and hope she got it out in front of Kurt because they were playing a high line that time. They did. Brazil did uh, well enough to get it. enough numbers around the ball to stop that service. You could see they're flirting with danger. It's not been so decisive, decisive, decisive enough. Great throw. Oh, the technique, Devana! She can score one of the goals. And what about this volley from 25 metres away? She catches out Danny and Lisa Devanna, Australia's greatest ever goal scorer, adds another stunner. 43 for her country now, and this is one to watch over and over again. What about the technique to hit this first time? With the audacity of Lisa Devanna. And she connects just perfectly. We actually seen a similar goal for South Melbourne a few weeks back, but look at the elation. It means so much to her. Timmy Cahill, she's after your uh, your accolades. Trying to get the 50 first. And that's three goals now against Brazil in her last two games. Scored against them. A decade ago this month in a World Cup in that five-goal thriller in a quarter-final up in Asia. And here they go again. It spins nicely for Butt. Looking for Kerr. Danny can deal with it. Oh, came off the back of Sam Kerr. And the keeper and defender a little panicky there. And there's a Brazilian down a long way away. They'll check on her welfare. It's Letitia. Might give us another chance to go back and look at that goal. Can't watch it enough. And that danger period before half time, it did come to haunt, but you can't expect a goal like that to be scored. It was just perfect technique. Uh, she's misreliable, isn't she? The big moments in the big games. Great ball, especially to pick uh, Lisa Devana out. Unmarked. But as I said, the audacity to hit that first time. There's not too many players that can actually connect it put it in a place where the keeper isn't. All three players sensing their opportunity. Kellen Knight, quick throw. Can't be offside from a throw. But I'll just flick it towards Devanna. She'll make something happen. And Devanna going, keeper, I can beat you here. With some players who really have worked on their game. Look at that from Kerr. But Gorry! It was travelling. Now Butts. And Australia all over them right now. To make a butt. 
She's up to 10 goals with Klepp in Norway. Really has an eye for goal and that history-making winner against the United States too. Uh, she's just she's getting herself in the right positions. You could see she made that run forward, as you said, for Elise Keller Knight earlier for the goal. But first time ball to Lisa Devano, and here they're under some serious pressure, Brazil. Dominating the corner counts. Van Egmont, chance again. Flicks off a Brazilian head. Should be a corner on the other side. Kennedy let it roll. For Brazil, that half-time whistle can't come quickly enough. Matildas would be happy to get some reward for effort. They've been up here, plenty of chances. And what I like about that is Brazil have made plenty of mistakes and haven't been punished for it. The in-swinger from KK. Hangs it up deep. Kennedy's attacking it. Good hands from Danny. The 24-year-old who plays with... Santos back home. Three to one advantage and balls into the area from Australia. And I think they'll really relish going the other way in the second half. You're expanding on that point earlier before I cut you off. Yeah, well, I think uh, Brazil, uh, you can't underestimate how strong that wind is. And they've really had to accommodate for it in the way that they put their balls forward. And you, I don't know what you think, Brenton, but they look like they've struggled to get out of the, the first half. And I know that's because they've, they haven't been decisive on the ball. It's, it seems like they're not sure what they're doing, very unsure. There's no movement off the ball. There's no options. But equally, it just seems they've just been camped in there. Another play off Devanna. It's 50-50 in terms of possession between these teams. It was about... 90 to 10 for Brazil in the opening couple of minutes. Australia couldn't touch it, but they've warmed to the task. And Catley has been so safe at the back. Well, it's fair to say I think Australia's had more meaningful possession in their final third. Australia got to be on guard. Just before the break here with Marta on the ball. And then Kennedy just took it down. Nice ball out to Kerr. He nods it down for Gorry. And that should be the end of the first half and a standing ovation for the Matildas and that lady Lisa Devanna what a goal to break the deadlock just before half time Sam Kerr's looked dangerous as well but it's Australia's greatest ever goal scorer Lisa Devanna with her 43rd for her country which separates these two teams at half time it's Australia 1 Brazil 0 Australia playing into the breeze, a significant breeze in this second half. And Brazil, their pride dented. That 6-1 hammering at the Tournament of Nations, but all their superstars are here down under. And they'll look to hit back in this second half. Australia set up aggressively with their kickoff as well. Kerr to Van Egmont. They've worked on this uh, training. They recycle it back through Kennedy. Imagine it. Emily, the Brazilian coach, would have talked about getting more shots, getting more shots off. 50-50 possession. They did spend a, a little bit of time in Australia's half, but uh, it's 9-1. to one. Australia's leading for shots on target. Oh, Kennedy bravely into the back of Cristiani. Just stood up, even though Emily Lima is pleading for a foul. There was nothing in it, really. Letitia. Telegraph that pass and Gorry. Oh, look at that from Kennedy. You wouldn't have seen that a few years ago. Playing with real confidence. Now Kelly Knight, look at that ball. Poor Devanna. Took her eye off it a little. You no know, damage done. Gets it back from Van Egmont. Oh, she has Ford down the line. Goes back to Van Egmont who can open up the pitch for Carpenter here. Look at that ball just sliced out to the young. Right back. Oh, the flick back to Carpenter. Perfectly timed challenge, though, as Carpenter was bowled over by Andressa Alves as well. And Kennedy talked about the confidence levels. She takes on the strike from 35 metres. <laughs> well, people might not remember her. Kennedy is a former midfielder, so anytime she gets a bit further up the park, this was absolutely stunning combination play between Carpenter and Sam Kerr. Such a great understanding between these 
It's Matilda's team. All happened so quick, but if she went with the same sort of Kennedy manoeuvre from earlier and just flicked it up over that defender's leg, then she probably gets fouled for the penalty. Here we go, the flick up. <laughs> <laughs> Devanna, but made the run, it deflects towards Kerr. She took a tumble. Good goalkeeping in the end, but at some expense. Two Brazilians, a little sore in back play. As Carpenter has to see off the threat of Andressa Alves. Lydia Williams doesn't want any of it. So Carpenter has to try and get out of trouble herself. Well played. Finds Gorry. And again, successfully played out from the back. Kerr, what about that? Fair technique to try and keep it moving towards Ford. Out from behind. Kerr cannot get a whistle out of this referee from across the ditch. I don't know what Kerr's done to New Zealanders in the past. Now Ford, but looks offside. And Ford was streaming into the area waiting for the return ball, but the whistle and flag were up. Wasn't a bad idea, was it? They're really opening up this defence. It's quick early balls and, and first time passes. You can see Caitlin Ford coming off the defence to create her own space. She knew that Butt was going to make that run in behind. That's her signature run. Look at Australia converge. Raffaelli loses possession. Carpenter, Gorry. Nice delivery. It breaks for Tamika Butt. This wouldn't sit the way she wanted it to. Shot was pretty tame. Well, this is her mark. Now Cristiani. Got all the tricks. She had choice of teammates with that pass. Rosanna able to run onto it and release Andressa Alves. Gorry went in, ball and all. And Carpenter helped win it back too. Fans trying to roar on a counter attack here. Devanna gets it to feet. Lisa Devanna looking for Caitlin Ford. Great save. And then the boot went up into the face of Danny. That's why the free kick has been given eventually. It was purely accidental from Caitlin Ford, but this could have done some damage. Look at the look at the way that Lisa Devanna holds this ball up for Caitlin Ford. Timing of that ball was equally as important as the run. You can see she looked up and she knew Caitlin hadn't hadn't made the run, held it off. Ford held her run. Oh, she's collected a foot in the in the meantime. Yeah, just on the follow through, the studs were up there. She was looking the other way and Wooshka. A bit of chat going on there, Sam Kerr. Talking it over with the referee about an earlier incident. They've really struggled with the pace of this uh, this attack line today. The Matildas, it happens so fast. If you don't react quick enough, you're scrambling. And I feel like for, for all those attacks that have not come from structured play, we found it difficult to manage. And when you wait so long for an opportunity, a rare opportunity at international level, just her second cap, she's not going to go off after that hit. She's made of tough stuff. Danny. Of course, Barbara, the first choice goalkeeper, was the hero in that penalty shootout last year. And that's a set piece or a free kick from inside her own area, so it has to leave the box. The advantage for a defending team is they can just touch the ball and have a restart if they're under pressure, and that's what they did. Cristiani, a slip from Van Egmont, opened up some space here. Look at that ball with purpose. She really does punch them beautifully, Cristiani. And Lydia Williams sweating on the cross. Caitlin Ford wants this one pumped long. And Williams tries to get it all the way to her. See that there's that wind playing a part in this match now. Those balls were perfectly timed. 
in front of a player so they could run onto it in the first half. Not the case this half. It was good, strong work by Rosanna. Just to knock Ford off the ball. Now it's Marta. Kennedy again in the road. Rosanna into the back of Caitlin Ford with the physicality. I think Ford would have been dragged here by her mum, Simone. She used to take her from Wollongong all the time on the train to go watch her manly side, no matter where they were playing. Caitlin wasn't that keen, but she would have been out to Penrith to watch a few NRL games. And right now, the physicality resembles an NRL contest. And Sam Kerr goes into the book. Too much chat from Sammy. Well, there's always going to be a lot of interest on Sam Kerr today, and that's... That's the new pressure she's going to have to deal with. It's not like she hasn't in the past. Rosanna again, commanding aerially. Look at that neat turn from Marta right through the challenge of Gorry, who comes again, and the advantage was over. Marta says, I never got that advantage. Here's Kerr trying to get on the end of things, but nice nod down. Devana closed down in the nick of time for Brazil by Bruna. And they'll get a corner out of it. Look at the numbers in the box here for the Matildas. Four yellow shirts for that cross. Marta's heading the same way as Sam Kerr. She just won't let this one rest. And I think she's got a fair point. There's a referee signal advantage for about three metres. And when it became the fourth metre and she lost possession, the advantage was gone. Australia have a corner as a result. Kennedy's coming through the hands of Danny. Cristiani tidies up. Sloppy return ball from Jennifer. Looking for a killer ball straight away. The Matildas. And Egmont. It's it back onto her favoured side. Or oh, Knight couldn't release, but... Letitia. Gorry, so industrious. In midfield, it was all over Andresa Alves that time. Marta. Andresinha. Marta knows the width is out here on the left. And they get it to Rosanna in the end. Andresinha. Emily Lima up in her technical area, trying to gesture to her team where to get the ball. Towards Kerr is harassing the back four. Look at all this pressure. Australia, they all know what their jobs are in this situation, but Brazil trying to play their way through Australia's midfield. It's hard yakka though, isn't it? Look at Rosanna. And eventually she just tries to hopefully find a teammate. Good use of the body from Andre Senha to keep it away from Gori. Kennedy with Marta to deal with. And a couple of club teammates head to head. Apparently there wasn't much chat over the last week or so before heading down under. Got a little frosty at the training facilities. Marta's ball. Helen Knight well positioned. That passage of play might be the first time we've seen Brazil string some passes together. And you can see how dangerous they are when they, they do get it right. First change of the game is coming. Thaisa for Brazil. Ready at the next stoppage. Fabiana trying to turn around the outside of Kellen Knight. Time for that change. Like for like. Taisa should slot into midfield for Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer was one of the Brazilian players on a yellow card, so no surprise to see her sacrificed. Well, a set piece opportunity for Marta to whip in. Senior just rolls it. Marta clips it. 
Dangerous right across the face. What a wicked ball in from Marta, who's so upset that a teammate couldn't turn it home. Oh, what a stunning cross. Perfectly weighted. And found, found Cristiani here. Cristiani just couldn't get a boot to ball. You can see how dangerous they are when they're starting to control this match now. Now Gorry able to turn about the first time this afternoon. Sam Kerr. Oh, they backed off and violated it. They're down in the penalty area. Kerr lurking. It was safety first from the goalkeeper. Just wanted to get a good connection on it. Got it out of play. They've put a lot of faith in this keeper, haven't they? They're really sticking with it. Danny. Nice play from Kerr to Carpenter. Now Gorry. Ford. Gorry on the follow up. Too many players in the vicinity. Taisa in her first touches to Letitia. Nice little move on to Mika Butt. Fabiana rode through the challenge of Kellen Knight, but not Catley. Lydia Williams finds her coach and not a teammate. She's not really had to do too much today. She's been sweeping a little bit higher. See Fabiana, she's she's working hard up the top. She really hasn't had much space to show us what she can do. Big <laughs> tackle here between Rosanna and Gorry. What about the crowd reaction to Gorry's endeavour? One of nine siblings, plenty of brothers in the mix as well for Gorry. So she had a few tangles in the backyard growing up, and showed all her hardness there. T-shirt. Go around Devanna. Look at their defensive work. Now Lisa Devanna. Let Brazil have it. Back to Andresinha. Opening up the angle and the shot. Oh, rattles back off the woodwork and Marta's offside. Couldn't bury the follow-up anyway, but what about the shot from Andresinha? Really testing Lydia Williams. Did she make a save here? We're not sure if she got a hand on this, but. They've been saved by the woodwork all the same. At the venom in this strike. She's, it's off one step as well. Out in front of her and bam. And I don't think Le uh, Lydia Williams had a chance on that. Look at the swerve. It curled out. See, Marta couldn't believe her luck. Tough to see on those replays where the Williams did get a touch, but one of her defenders was saying, well done. And she has been the scourge of Brazil in the past. Think back to that last World Cup when she denied Formiga. Remember the Brazilian bench were all up celebrating Formiga's strike. Here we go, one nil up. And Lydia Williams said, uh-uh, oh. I'll get that one up from where the spiders live. And there's another 10 moments like that that I can remember. Uh, and one that we'll never forget is that save in the last five minutes against the US for our first win. It's a finger to this, this shot in the final minutes. Oh, Gorry again went in. Taisa, credit to her. Letitia getting plenty of touches in that right back row. Kellen Knight picks the pocket, gets it quickly to Butt. It's time here for Australia, and they keep it moving. Devanna around the outside. Well played Fabiana helping out. Letitia down that right hand side and they say last touch who? A little bit of hesitation, they say goal kick. She's done some serious work on the left hand side. I know Kaya Simon. Oh this is this is just the, the risk they're taking in the in the back third, this Brazilian team. It's it's completely unnecessary and they're trying to play out, I understand it, but there's just not, it's not enough movement. Now they're out there. Cristiani can turn. Andressa Alves is unmarked out here on the left wing, but but won it back. She thought she was having her shirt tugged. A little wave of the finger from Tamika Butt. Not going to prompt a booking, but I think she had a case. She's been 
held off by Cristiano. There we go. There's the shirt pull. He gave it away to the referee. Yeah, the Aussie players came out with the long sleeve arrangement under their shirts for the second half. A little cool out here in Penrith. And Devanna gets rid of her marker. Kerr. Ford. Took on two and left it behind. One back by Devanna once more. Quickly to Ford. Devanna gets it back. She knows Ford is there. Now Kerr makes her move. And the pass was just behind it. Gorry now. So dangerous in these situations. Look at the gliding move from Gorry. And Brazil can't get out of their defensive third right now. Well done, Carpenter. Moved into the right space there. Stajic will be delighted with the game awareness. Gorry coming into the game. Kerr wants it. Flag is up. She won't get her goal. The crowd going nuts as they see Kerr put it in the back of the net, but it doesn't count. Oh, this is this all started from a, an enormous amount of space between the, the midfield. Look at it. Look at this. Katrina Gorry's picked it up with time on the ball. Sam Kerr hasn't been able to time a run well enough. Oh, they are playing with fire right now, Brazil in their back third. Oh, Corey nearly got that one too. Now there's some space. Finally got past Australia's midfield. Kennedy stretches, goes to ground. Marta got around Kennedy, but Van Egmont poked it away. Look at that. Well, Marta is furious that she didn't get a decision there. Australia quickly the other way. Well, she gave us the little Zidane turn there, Marta, and was clearly upended. Yeah, she's done enough to get a free kick here. You can see, and also she'd be bumped off the ball before that. Beautiful, beautiful turn there. Get to see all her skill set on display. She's done an enormous amount of work defensively too. Many times we've seen her in the midfield picking up the ball. I think she's a bit frustrated with the midfield, not, not demanding the service. Carpenter tried to take them on, lost possession. Van Egmond wins it back and rides through the challenge. Gorry can keep it moving for Butt. Looking for Kerr, that ball wasn't really on. Rosanna trying to clear her lines, only as far as Helen Knight. Flicks off the heel of Gorry. Devanna, there first again. In Australia are winning more of those 50-50 balls as this game goes on. And that's a first yellow card for Rosanna. She's been on the tightrope throughout the game. I thought it might have been her second, but she wasn't shown one earlier. Look, I think Rosanna's also had a, a month off football. She's playing in uh, Brazil, but she left the NWSL. Wasn't happy with the coach there. You get to see this challenge. It was really tired. She looks tired. And we're going to start to see more tired legs. More tired actions like this, that's just, that's lazy defending and it's not called for, put a, put a team in a really awkward position. Uh, she's had a, a stunning career though. Probably done a little bit more defending she would have liked to today. Playing in the Sydney Olympics as a teenager. Lost out in the bronze medal game to Germany. Just down the way at the Olympic Stadium. Catley leaves it for Van Egmont. Nice looking ball. Danny comes. Mr. Gorry picks up the second ball. Kennedy now. The cross. Kerr! Sam Kerr has a goal! That's why Australia is just crazy about this girl. Another goal for her country. And what about the improvisation there? To flick the header goalwards and find the bottom corner. 2-0 to the Matildas. What about the elevation she gets? The ball was superb. It was sublime. Stunning. Looked up. 
and just all it needed to be able to beat the keeper. Keeper didn't even know it was coming. Alana Kennedy on a dime, Sam Kerr, the nouse to be able to put it in the corner. 2 0 Australia. Most fabulous replay showing how deliberate it was from Kerr. And many in the stands have come to watch this young lady today, and she delivers like a big time player tends to do. Here she is again, hunting possession for her country. That goal scoring ratio is going to improve in the years to come, you sense. That's her 13th goal in cap number 54 today. Hat trick against Japan in the Tournament of Nations. Rounded off the 6 1 round of Brazil last time. And now makes it two. Well, Gori couldn't find the angle to Devanna. Goes to the back post. Van Egmont, or rather, Ford getting in there. Good discipline stuff from Ford. Goes back to Kellen Knight. And Brazil get out of jail this time. Brazil preparing a couple. More changes, as you can see, and Australia's first substitute not too far away, Hayley Razza. Well, that's more pace for Brazil to deal with. I have no doubt Brazil still have goals left in them. But I tell you what, if they don't tighten up things at the back, more discipline in marking players. Job done again by Carpenter. To Win it back for Australia. This packed crowd, sellout in Penrith, baying for more goals. Here's Kerr again. Gets away from Raffaele and keeps it in. Important middle flick from Brazil. Now they're chasing the game. What a ball. Andressa Alves. To Cristiani, opens up the space. Cristiani! Oh, Lydia Williams came back off her back and she keeps it out. Could easily have been an own goal. And the woodwork on either side has been struck in this second half. Well, what about that strike from Cristiani? Your money was on it going in. She looked up. No one hits it better than Cristiani. Lydia Williams again. A little bit of luck off the back there, but Cristiani was always going to get this on her left foot. She looked up, hit it, struck it beautifully. Lydia Williams up again to get the second bite of the cherry. And she's made the save again there, isn't she? Or initially. Uh, Might have tipped it onto the post. She's an absolute freak, Brenton. It's, it's unbelievable some of the saves she pulls out. Speaking of freaks, what about the goal that opened the scoring today? That's why Lisa Devanna is getting this reception. Oh, she, she's played for 12 years for the Matildas. To play in front of a crowd like this absolutely mean the world to her. We get to see the strike again. Quick ball, as we talked about. The audacity of her to have that first time. How many times that comes off your shin at training? We'll need an explanation on the celebration. Is that WWE or something? I think the W League's on, on its way. It might have been the <laughs> WWE. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, plenty more action coming on Fox Sports throughout the W League season. A lot of double headers with the A League action. Looking forward to bringing all that to you, the Fox football team. Uh, Rosanna is making way. Jusinara slots in in the left back role. <laughs> Gabby Zanotti, who played against Australia in California, goes in up front, and Dabinia. Here's the final change. She was thwarted by Lydia Williams time and time again in Belo Horizonte last year. So after that long stoppage for all those substitutions, we're right to go again. 
He's the fresh player. One of them. Good hold up play by Gabby Zanotti. Another of the substitutes. Davinia. Asking a lot there of Marta. And the crowd roars as Carpenter got there first. Beat the five time World Player of the Year to it. Hayley Rasso out there for Australia. She's getting invaluable experience playing in the United States for the Portland Thorns with some real talent around her. Yeah, she was another one of those players like Tamika Butt who struggled to find a, a starting position in this team. She went away to the World Cup and I think she's, she's gained a level of maturity from playing over in Portland Thorns. Scored a couple goals. She's doing so well. They call her Ribby, uh, Ribbon Razzo. <laughs> Always got those ribbons out. And here she is right on cue after Kerr's flick on. Nice touch off Kerr. <laughs> now a double ricochet and now the long throw looking for Ford. Rasso getting involved. Stray arm just caught under the senior. Ford. We've seen that a few times today, haven't we? Players just leaving the ball behind a little, almost treading on it. They wouldn't have minded the pitch just being slipped up a fraction more. I have to say, this in injection with the Binos has been really good for Brazil. She's been busy in the midfield, the number nine. I think it's fair to say that uh, Marta and Cristiano haven't had a huge amount of support up top from their midfield. Dabinia might be the, the key they're looking for. Yeah, she's got 21 goals in this her 60th appearance for a country today, Dabinia, and you'd expect her to be a starter in the next game on Tuesday night in Newcastle. Lovely move forward. Look at the pace. She goes through the gears. Kerr peels off. Ford couldn't quite find her, but Razzo latches onto it. Some an issue for the players, perhaps. Now Brazil going the other way. Push it back, push it back then. Push it back. Gabby Zanotti. Again, Carpenter wins out. Gives it away to Andre Senior, though. Cristiani. Dabinia. Just missed the little drag back. Of possession. Well, this is this is what Alan Stanjic would love to see his team doing. They're up two 0 Oh, they've spoken too soon. Looked like they were being composed on the ball. No need to take any risk and really just keep control of this match. Possession stats still 50-50. Well, Legazzo moving into shot nicely there. <laughs> in front of Alan Stajic. About to make her entrance. And you think back to last year at the Olympics. From about 30 metres away, she hit the crossbar. A matter of millimetres in it, Australia could have been into the semis at the Maracanã. Fine margins of sport. Gorry. Well, the decision goes against her. And that is perplexing because it looked like the higher boot was coming the other way. Oh, this is a really good uh, substitution choice for Alan Stadjic. <laughs> really just shows the amount of depth he has in this team. It's unbelievable. I think this is probably what's, what's, uh, what's actually contributed to their success. And you look at the Tournament Nations as a perfect example. The way he can rotate his teams completely. Chloe Legazzo is a starter. Kai Simon, starter. Michelle Heyman, all these players to come back into the game. He, he's got the, the best challenge ahead of him uh, uh, is trying to pick a, select a starting 11 each match. So one Norwegian based midfielder off, another one on. Nice looking ball here. What about the first touch from Dabinia, but Kennedy took it off her boot second time around. Oh, I really like this player. Absolutely gorgeous technique on the ball, but perfectly timed run. 
Still plenty of tickets available for the Tuesday night game in Newcastle. And you'd be racing out to get them after this performance from Australia so far. We'll be part of the action live on Tuesday night. I believe there's already 13,000 being sold for that Newcastle match on a Tuesday night. There you go. You can follow the link on the screen there to get your tickets. Razzo putting herself about again. Referee happy to wave play on that time. And Brazil win it back. Marta gets her head up. Dabinia again. Beautifully timed run. Carpenter sees off the threat once more. Only briefly, though. Dabinia cutting out. Legazzo. Well, they thought they were going to get a corner there. And Legazzo said, not on my watch. She's too strong and too well balanced there, Sam Kerr. Was clearly being fouled, but she kept her feet and doesn't get the decision. Both superstars have been turning with quizzical looks throughout the game. I don't think Marta or Kerr have got anything on it go their way. Cristiani again. Gets it from Gabi Zanotti. Look at that little flick. To Binia! They've got one back now, Brazil. And there's still 12 minutes plus stoppage time to go. It's game on in Penrith. And Dabini has made a real impact off the bench. Well, this is a really crafty finish. I love it. Cristiani, you can see she's held the ball up long enough for Dabini to make that run. But look at the class. Look at the finish, the composure in front of goal. Great little run in behind. Ellie Carpenter couldn't do much more than she could, more than she did. Look at that chip from Cristiani, world class. Beautifully placed. Dabinia just got the step on Carpenter and was composed one-on-one -on -one with Lydia Williams. Plays for the North Carolina Courage in the States. Clever little flick there by Kerr. Razzo. Might have been able to go first touch around Raffaelli, but she left enough of it in for the defender to make that sliding challenge. Yeah, and we would like to see a bit more from Razzo. She's so dangerous when she takes it to the byline and, and beats her player. She's an amazing amount of pace on her, but she's just explosive. She used to play right back, and obviously Ellie Carpenter's pushed her out of that role. She's playing higher up. But there's that versatility again. Australia would love to restore the two-goal buffer. Kellen Knight near post. It was a little awkward, but cleared successfully. Second time around to the back post. And again, the header is clear, and away they go once more. Early ball just got away from Marta, and Gorry was back. Catley. Beautiful ball dropped down in front of Ford. Goes around, gets to the byline. Kerr's waiting. Sam Kerr. Second time around, Gorry would have been offside if she got involved. Australia pick up the scraps again. Kevin Knight wrapping around Ford. Used her as a decoy. Advantage. And after Legazzo committed the foul. Zanotti, little one-two. Dabinia upset with herself. You can see uh, there's there's definitely a difference between the players that play in uh, the NWSL and the players that play in Europe. And it's such a, a fast-paced, intense game that they play in the US. And Dabinia, you can tell she's been playing there. The energy that she's brought this second half. It's the same energy that Sam, Sam Kerr brings to the Matildas, and they've needed it. And the Chinese league is growing. A lot of these Brazilian players have been lured by the cash to China in recent years. A couple of them playing with Barcelona as well. That little flick finds its way to Kellen Knight. Only scored one international goal. She seeks a second, and it goes just wide. Well, why not? It's not a bad idea. She's beaten a player. Just didn't connect with the ball well enough. See, she's hooked it a bit. 
still getting these opportunities late. We were there for that lone international goal in Vietnam in the Asian Cup. And she curled in the free kick and no one got a touch on it. This will be a flag raised. All her talent, you'd expect her to have a few more goals, KK. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, how many does Alana Kennedy have these days? Three. Much at three. I think Elise Keller Knight might have a few more. She's played a, a fair amount of time in the back line. Brazil. Oh, Cristiani's flip doesn't come off that time. Hands go to the head in frustration. Bruno just let that one bounce and Kerr. And Hedda finds Ford. Australia stream forward. Lovely hold up play. Caitlin Ford. Kerr. Missed Legazzo. A tired pass. Dabinia. It's going to find its way through almost to the new left back. Giusinata. Australia get the whistle. This is a, a very interesting tackle. It's something you'd see from the Penrith Panthers. <laughs> Some full arms around once Hayley Rasso had made her way in front. Picked on by Kerr. Rasso, aggressive first touch. And just caught too much of Yusinara. Few boos ring out. They've gotten right into this game, this massive crowd. 15,000 plus have packed into Pepper Stadium. Wonderful scene for Australian women's football. It's quite, a surreal, it's quite surreal to actually be here to see it. There's actually, there's no space to sit. It's actually jam-packed, especially during NRL season, especially, you know, it's really good to see. Catley, ball and all. Nothing that helps it on to Gori, who can turn and look for Razzo. Even further afield was Legazzo. Keeps it rolling. Look at Carpenter's work rate. Up and down that right wing, she was there again. And Legazzo earned the foul. Legazzo's used her body really well here, getting the ball under control after she had a body in the right position. It's always going to draw a foul. Raffaelli. It's really struggling to keep this Matilda's team in front. Most of the damage has been done. And turn, when play's been turned around. It's not really in Australia's makeup to try and sit on a 2 1 lead and see it through. They Absolutely want a third. Not. Five minutes plus stoppage time to go. First of two internationals in a matter of days between these countries. Kerr wants it deep, and Egmont to deliver. Kerr shaping for it, gets the header. It was goal bound as well. She read it better than the keeper, but it's cleared off the line. Legazzo keeping it alive here. Look at the skill level of Chloe Legazzo. Not fouled, it's just the throw for the Matildas. Oh, she's so skillful. And if you give her the space, she can actually whip in a really good ball too. Lucky to keep her at bay then. See, she was always under control here. Nutmeg to Marta to drive her mad. And the frustration, look at Marta. She shouldn't be back at right back, but she's coming back to, to search for the ball. Dory kept it low. Legazzo teeing up Van Egmont. Time she farms it out to Razzo. Did she get across in? It's a beauty. Kerr diving head on. Legazzo. I couldn't turn it home. 
a night. That was struggling. Goalkeeper was out of position. Razzo, last touch off her. Goal kick. Well, what about Kerr's effort? Her favourite goal was a diving header in a grand final for Sydney FC. And she flew through the air once more. Just how? It's almost like it would have been easy to use a foot. It was so low. But the power that she generates from it. They've won it back again. Beautiful ball. Razzo, Kerr, to Gori. Around one. Brazil putting bodies in the road. Razzo's ball. They'll clear the danger this time. Australia should have got a shot away there. Being a little too cute. Well, Sam Kerr needed to be more greedy. She needed to turn and, and have a shot. And I think she didn't realise how much space she had. Look at all those shots since the 81st minute mark that they could get picked off here. She's into the area once more, Dabinia. But Lydia Williams gets everything behind it. That's why Australia have got to be more ruthless at the other end. They're leaving the door open. Well, they can't leave that number nine, Dabinia, with space. And the understanding between herself and Cristiani. And that was touch type marking too. She's just so skillful. You think she'd have to get the nod on Tuesday for a start. Dabinia. All given away by Kennedy. Dabinia trying a little trick on Van Egmont, who's seen that before, particularly training with the superstars day in, day out with Wolfsburg. Kerr's on a yellow card here, gives away the foul and doesn't want to mouth off. Surely the referee is aware that we don't want Sam Kerr to get a red card today and miss Tuesday night. <laughs> Send a note out. But I, don't, I think in general, Alan Stadjic would want to see these players finish a match out. Such a dangerous scoreline, 2-1. Ludmilla Miller looks cab off the rank. Andrea Senior makes way. Just popped her knocks in midfield today. And Lord Miller getting straight in towards the edge of the area. Marta. Trying to drop one on a dime here. Good looking ball in. Kennedy got her head to it, and it's a corner. Into the 90th minute. Australia have dominated the corner count. Seven to two. Marta looking into the sun. Lydia Williams went with the fist, didn't get a touch on it, which is fortunate. I'll get a goal kick out of it. Yeah, well, she normally takes those ones. Not sure there's any sun issues down there, but this one was allowed to play through. Could have been more dangerous than it ended. We get to see Kerr here. Look at this header. Unbelievable athleticism. <laughs> She'll do anything not to use a left foot. <laughs> but it's, it's effective nonetheless. Yeah, it was very nearly assist, but Legazzo just anticipated a touch off the defender. If she just went towards the ball, she would have been able to put it in an empty net. Well, I don't think anyone actually expected Sam Kerr to get <laughs> down and, and knock that across goal. I think this is the, this is the kind of stuff that Alan Stadjic will pick up in uh, in analysis throughout the throughout the week before the the Tuesday match. That second ball, making sure they win that. And here's our star leaving the field now. Listen to the crowd. And actually, people are standing. Just going a standing ovation. You'd have to say, Speedy, is there a more popular sports star in Australia right now, male or female? Is there a more elite sports person? flying their craft at the moment than Sam Kerr. Look at that goal, which at the moment is the winner for Australia. That wonderful header from Sam Kerr, who scores goals in each and every way. Didn't give us the backflip. Teammates got to her too quickly. Maybe saving it for Tuesday night. So midway through stoppage time here. 
Australia looking to hold on for the win. Pick up some more precious FIFA ranking points to continue that climb. Marta trying to run rings around Legazzo, but she poked it away effectively. Chloe Legazzo and Gorry was fouled. Eventually gets the whistle. It's not against you, it's against your superstar teammate Martin. Ford. Oh, that little manoeuvre. So last touch off her. She's getting up ready to take the throw. <laughs> The United States as underdogs first up against the USA got the 1-0 win beat Japan 4-2 routed Brazil 6-1 three straight wins lifted the silverware there now back on home soil in front of this massive crowd they're looking to make it 3-1 at the death here Roman Dale just on for Sam Kerr it's the first touch eluding her there The Matildas do it. Four straight wins for Alan Stagic's side. This sellout crowd in Penrith thoroughly entertained. The Matildas put on a show. Devanna, Australia's greatest ever goal scorer, scoring an absolute cracker in the first half. Sam Kerr, who many had come to see, she doubled Australia's lead. Dabinia pulled one back. She'll be a danger player next Tuesday night. But Australia hold on for the 2-1 victory over Brazil as this rivalry continues. Great game to watch and Amy Duggan's going to get some reaction for us. Some reaction, it is pumping down here and I have the two stars of today's show. Lisa Devana who broke that deadlock in the first half and Sam Kerr who put the winner away. Lisa, I'm going to start with you. Audacious has been used to describe the attempt today. How did it feel? Oh, it's fantastic to get the result today. You know, we're just proving ourselves that we that game against um, Brazil in the US wasn't just a one off. And, you know, the crowd, this, it's just a dream come true to see so many people come out and support us and, and to get the result just tops it off. It was a lot tighter today than it was last time you played. Yeah, definitely. They've brought out their stronger squad. They wanted to prove to the coach and to the Australian fans that, you know, they're, they're the team to beat. But obviously we went out and played our game and we executed and got the result. And this crowd, it's like a 12th man for you. Oh, uh, you know, I've been in the team for, you know, 15 years and I've never played in a, a stadium where I have, you know, 20,000 people screaming for the Matildas. So it's a, you know, it's a very emotional, especially when the national anthem was playing. I was trying to hold back tears. I couldn't even sing it. Um, so it's, it's just a, you know, a great day. Let's hope there's many more packed stadiums to come and we look forward to seeing you in action again on Tuesday. Congratulations on the win, Lace. Thank you, Amy. And of course, Sam Kerr, the star of Australia at the moment. You are loved by this crowd. You are loved by Australia back at home. Congratulations on the win. Little header. Yeah, it was just nice to help the team out. And like you said, Lisa's goal was great, but it doesn't matter who scores in our team. We're just fighting as a team and hoping to get that win like we did today. Is there added pressure for you coming into a game like this knowing that you're up for a major award, that it's a big packed out stadium at home, a lot of pressure on your shoulders? Yeah, actually no pressure. Um, taking it in my stride, kind of don't let it get to my head and, you know, this team's so great, I feel honoured to be flying the flag for Aussies. There could be three, four, five girls that could be up there nominated with me, so I feel very proud to be flying the flag for Aussies, but I'm sure there'll be many more nominations for Aussie girls to come. I was sure too, and many more goals from yourself. You'd be happy to add that one to your tally today. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I've said a few times I haven't scored as many as I would have liked for the Matildas, so hopefully the goals can keep coming. All right, Sam, we look forward to seeing you in another full stadium on Tuesday night. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Can't wait. <laughs> yep. She delivered again, Sam Kerr, and we saw the reaction as well. The Matildas all getting around a physio of the past, and Sam Kerr would have loved to be part of that huddle as well. Oh, yeah, Kate Beerworth has, has basically kept Sam Kerr and many Matildas together uh, throughout their really difficult times, and, and not only that, been a really, uh, I guess, uh, not just physical support, but mental support for the injured players. They're so crucial on, uh, when you're on away, away tournaments, but uh, so great to see her recognised.